We're asked to graph the function f of x is equal to negative 3x squared plus 8. So let's just try a couple of x values and see what values f of x takes on for each of those x values. And then we can plot them and, and, and graph our function. So let me draw a little table here. So this is going to be x, and let's call this f of x. And we could set, we could say, set our y values to be equal to f of x. So let's say that x is equal to negative 2. And I'm just picking these numbers arbitrarily. You could have picked negative 3. You could have picked negative 1.5. I'm just picking numbers that are relatively close to 0 on both the negative and the positive side. And numbers, I like using the integers because those are will be relatively easy to work with, much better than if I was using something like negative pi or negative 1.3 or something crazy like that. So these are just arbitrary points that I'm sampling from the domain so we can, I can get the generalized shape of the of in this case it's probably is going to be a curve the generalized shape of the curve and then I can connect the dots so when x is negative 2 what is f of x f of x is negative 3 times negative 2 squared plus 8 which is equal to negative 2 squared is positive 4 positive 4 times negative 3 let me write this this negative 3 times 4 plus 8 that's negative 12 plus 8 which is equal to negative 4 so the point negative 2, negative 4 is going to be on our graph. Actually, let me just start graphing it. So let me draw my, I'll call this the y-axis. And I'm just going to set our y values, whatever the output of our function is. So y is equal to f of x. And then let me draw the x-axis. So let me draw the x-axis like this. So let me draw, actually I want to do it like this. I'll draw the x-axis like that. So there's my x-axis. And I'm going to try the points x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 2. So this first point over here, 2, negative 4, and actually let me graph that. So let's say that this right over here is negative 4, this would be positive 4, and this would be positive 8. So the first point is negative 2, negative 4. When x is negative 2, f of x. When the input into our function is negative 2, the output is negative 4. Negative 2, negative 4, right over there. That's the point negative 2, comma, negative 4. Let's do another one. What happens when x is equal to negative 1? Then f of x is negative 3 times negative 1 squared. And let me write it negative 1 squared plus 8. Negative 1 squared is just 1, so it becomes negative 3 plus 8. This is going to be equal to 5. So we have the point negative 1, 5 on our graph. Negative 1, 5 is going to sit, so this would be 6 right over here. So 5 is going to be right over there. So we have negative 1, negative 1, 5 is going to be right over there. Negative 1, comma, 5. And then let's see what happens when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, f of x is negative 3 times 0 squared plus 8. This part's just a 0, so it's just equal, equals 8. So we have the point 0, 8. 0, 8 is right over there. So that's 0, comma, 8. And then let's see what happens when we go when x becomes positive 1. Then you have negative 3 times positive 1 squared plus 8. Positive 1 squared is the same thing as negative 1 squared. So once, you get, once again, you get negative 3 plus 8. It is equal to 5. So this is the point right over here. It is 1 comma 5. And then finally, let's do one more point. Let's see what happens when x is positive 2. When x is positive 2, f of x is negative 3 times positive 2 squared. 2 squared plus 8. This right over here is negative 3 times 4, which is negative 12 plus 8 is equal to negative 4. So when x is positive 2, y equals f of x is equal to negative 4. So this over here, and you might want to plot even more points to get the general shape of it, is going to be a downward opening curve, a downward opening parabola, we could call it. And it will look like this. And I'll draw it as a dotted line just so that I can, just so that I can do a decent job of it. It's going to look something, I just messed up those last few. It's going to look something like, oh, let me draw a little bit straighter. So this curve, I think the main thing is I have my scale off a little bit. So it's going to look something, something like that. And so this point is right over here. I'm going to have to make these points a little bit bigger so they fall on my line. But I want the curve to look somewhat reasonable. That point is right over there. And this last blue point 
is the point 2 comma negative 4. And if you're saying, wait, how do you know to curve it just like that using those points? Frankly, that's just from previous experiencing, experience knowing that this is a parabola. If you really wanted to verify it for yourself, I really encourage you to take out some nice clean graph paper and plot the points exactly. And then you could even try points like negative 1 half and positive 1 half. And you'll see that this curve shapes out like this. And one thing you might notice is that the curve is kind of that the right side of this curve looks like the left side of this curve. That whatever the positive x value, we take on the same f of x value as the negative x value. And that's because in our function definition, whatever our input is, we square it. So whether we start with positive 2 or negative 2, when you square it, you get the same value. Whether you start with positive 1 or negative 1, you square it, you get the same value. And that's why positive f of positive 2 is equal to f of negative 2. And for, all, and for really any other number, f of positive 1 is equal to f of negative 1.